All right, hello again. And uh, didn't think I'd be back this soon doing another here's a new camera type of video. But I did go ahead and buy the Panasonic G95. And the reason I bought this is I had a really good experience with the GH5 and the G9, uh, which also have the same sensor as this. It's a 20.3 megapixel sensor. Uh, with the Venus processor. Uh, so I believe it's the same processor, same sensor, so therefore the same image quality. And I think the GX9 has the same sensor. Um, so anyway, this is kind of a mix between a GH5, there's a fly landing on my leg, uh, GH5 and a G9. I had both the GH5 and the G9. Um, ended up selling them as I was switching around trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, so now I have the Z7, which I'm recording this with right now. And it's on face detect, so if I try to show the camera, it's probably going to just keep focusing on my face, um, unless I hide my face and put the camera right in front of it. Um, so I had the XE3, Fuji XE3, as my like backup camera, and um, I usually just like to have a smaller camera to travel. Uh, you know, when I'm traveling for work. Makes it a little easier to have a camera for work like that, to keep it in my backpack, uh, my laptop bag, basically. It's a backpack for my laptop and so on at work. And um, I can just slip this in there with a little neoprene pouch and uh, be safe and secure. So I like to have a small camera like that. And uh, the XE3, I just didn't really, I never really got on very well with it. And um, I probably should have just followed my heart and got the X100F and would have been a lot happier with it. Um, I only had 752 shutter actuations on that XE3, and I had that for like probably seven or eight months. So I finally went ahead and decided to sell that and um, picked up a camera that I know I would be happy with because I already liked the GH5, already liked the G9, and I actually had a G85 before I had those other two cameras. And uh, that's kind of what started it. You know, like I liked the G85 so much, got the GH5, and, um, and then once I sold my GH5, I kind of moved into a Sony a7R 3 and uh, needed a, another so-called backup camera, but I got the G9, and you know, it was really not a small camera at all. And um, so anyway, switching around a lot, back to the G95 now. And uh, this was just released like around May 30th or so, B&H Photo had it um, in stock, so I went ahead and got it, and I got it May 31st, I think is when it was delivered. And um, so, hopefully I'm not losing my train of thought here. As far as the um, build of the body compared to the G85, it's not a ton different. The grip is a little bit bigger. It is really comfortable. Uh, I know what I was talking about, the size. The um, Z7 that I'm recording with now, if you look at my website where I have the G95 gallery, uh, there's comparisons you know, with the G95 and GH, G95 and the Z7 sitting next to each other. And the, Z, the G95 is really just a tiny bit smaller than the Z7. And of course the Z7's is full frame camera. Um, it's really not much different. So the funny thing is, you know, Micro Four Thirds, the G95 is just about as uh, big as the G, uh, Z7, which is a full frame camera with in-body image stabilization. Uh, but the thing is the lenses will be a lot bigger on the, um, the full frame camera. Uh, the 24 to 70, I think, that's on there now that I'm recording with 24 to 70 f/4 the S the S line lens on the Z7. That's actually a, a fairly small lens, but when you get up into the bigger lenses, um, you know they're, they're definitely going to be bigger than the equivalent on the Micro Four Thirds. So on the G95, the only thing I have right now is the 12 to 60 kit lens, which again is another thing that I knew I really liked uh, from having the G85 because it was a kit with the G85. Um, this it's a 12 to 60, which is a 24 to 120 equivalent on the um, full frame, and it's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture, so it is a variable aperture, and so 5.6 on a full frame is like depth of field of around f11 or so. Um, but I did go ahead and order a used, you know, like new um, Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter f1.7 because that you know got rave reviews, and I just want you know a small lens just to poke around with now and then, uh, really high quality lens, got it at a really good price. Uh, comes with a box and everything else, the thing looks like new. Um, so that'll be here in a few days, but I don't really plan on buying any more lenses for this because that's the thing, I don't want to build this up too much, I want to keep my focus on the Z7. Um, there's a chance that I might, just because they're pretty cheap these days actually, 
the uh, Olympus 12 to 12 to 40 f2.8 at 2.8 lens. Um, that's a really nice high quality zoom lens. Um, it'll work really well in this body. So I may go ahead and buy that. You know, they get them all day long on eBay for $500 and, uh, you know, in excellent shape. So I might do that, but that's, I really don't want to go too far with it. And what I'm looking for for the Z7 actually is more lenses. And I'm hoping Nikon within the next year or so come out with a 24 to 120 or a little bit more, 24 to 200 or somewhere in that range, F4, um, that I can use on the Z7. Um, currently, I just have the 24 to 70 f4 f z mount lens, the native lens for the z7, and the uh, 24 to 120 f mount lens. And so I have to use the FTZ adapter with that. So back to the G95. Uh, it does have pop-up flash. Not that I would really use it. May, but probably not. Um, does have you know a nice um, dial in the top left, which is for you know, your drive mode. And then the common, you know, PASM and some user, custom user setting uh, memory positions and you know, movie position and so on. And you have white balance ISO and exposure compensation. I probably don't really use those at all. Um, I have the exposure compensation assigned to the rear dial, and then I'm in aperture priority pretty much all the time. And the front dial, front dial is my aperture. Um, of course, it has the um, on the back, you know, the focus mode button, which is nice. So you can um, change your focus modes here just by flipping the switch. Um, it does have the new spinny dial instead of the um, four-way D-pad kind of thing. And of course, it's got the fully articulating screen. Um, and that's the other thing about this. You know, it's a really nice touchscreen. You can touch through all the menus just like you can with the Nikon, but I think the Nikon implementation is a little bit better. Sorry if I'm comparing you know, between the Z7 and this, uh, but that's what I have. So. On a Z7, you can just kind of flick through the menus, like it'll go page to page if you just flick it. So, but on the um, menus on the G9, you have to, um, on the side, there's little tabs and you just press that and, you know, to go page to page. But um, I don't really use it that much, so the only thing that I find lacking that I would really like to have on the back of the, Z, the G95 is a little um, joystick for changing autofocus. I did change the D-pad, this little, well, not D-pad, this uh, round selector, which is a four-way selector also, change that so that I can directly access left, right, up, and down for the focus point. So that's how I normally move my focus point around because I don't normally leave the um, touch screen out like this um, just to protect it. And I don't really use it that much because my glasses are not really co corrected for close-up. Um, so I'm normally, you know, I can't really see it unless I see it clearly unless I'm further out like this. And I just don't use it that much. Um, so I usually keep it turned in, and therefore that means you know you can't really use the touchpad to shift the focus around if you, as you have it up to your eye. Um, so I've got it in like this all the time usually, and I just pull it out once in a while if I want to you know do something without looking through the viewfinder. Um, you know there are some. Um, so anyway, that it would be nice to have a touchpad or a joystick for autofocus, but then you know you're getting back up into the higher end bodies and. This pretty much has everything that you want except for the joystick. Uh, there's some custom function buttons there, there, and then these, the three of the up and down and the right side I think is a custom function button. I think you can change the, this one here, this one inside the rear dial on the top, that's a function button. Um, but um, as far as, you know, if anybody should buy the G95, it, it is more comfortable than the G85, the grip is really nice. Um, you know, it's it's bigger now. Like I said, it's almost as big as the Z7. And uh, so if I put my hand in there, where I'd normally hold it, my finger, my little finger, is not really hanging off the bottom too much. It is a little bit, but um, so it is bigger. Um, the control is really nice. Front and rear dial, right where you want them, and uh, the AF on, which is in the center of there, and the um, focus mode selection, so you can make that AF on. Um, the card door is on the side, it's a UHS-2, just one card, of course it's a lower end body. And uh, while I'm at it, you know, you might be thinking, well, why'd you buy a G95? Because you can get the G9 for, this is $1,200 with the kit, kit lens, and the G9 right now on sale or body only, I think is about $1,200 or pretty close to that. So you think, well, you could get the flagship 
Panasonic Micro Four Thirds body G9 for about the same price you get this, but of course you don't get a lens, and then you're you're in a bigger body, and then um, you kind of getting. For me, it's kind of like you know slippery slope. If I get up into that, then you know well I you know feel like I need to buy better lenses for it and so on. But whereas with this, you know it just needs to be my second you know occasionally used body. And um, I, could, I do and could use it as a primary camera sometimes. Um, you know, like I said, I've got a lot of images I love from the GH5 and the G9, and this has the same sensor in it. And um, focus is blazingly fast. I mean, it's really fast. Um, even in lower light, I was just playing around, and it does focus really quick. Um, but, you know, I don't really know too much more to say about this, but um, I think finally, at least I hope, you know, I'm finally kind of in my little happy spot with my camera. So Z7 will be like a long-term camera for me, hopefully at least three years. And, um, you know, kind of like my D700 was the last camera that I really loved. And back then, you know, before all the mirrorless cameras came out when the D700, when I had that 2008 to sometime in 2012, um, you know, it was almost four years or so. Um, things have changed a lot, you know, there's been a lot of improvements in cameras. Back then it was just, you know, here's the DSLR, well there's the next level DSLR and that's what you did. You just, you know, upgrade to the next body, you know, but they had the better features or, you know, at some point, you know, it's just taking pictures. You know, you've got your aperture and your shutter speed and ISO and, um, you know, what else do you need? Um, it is nice to have in-body image stabilization, you know, all those sort of things. But now I've got two nice bodies that um, you know have really nice image stabilization, really nice video. Each one, um, the Z7 obviously has a much better image quality as far as dynamic range and high ISO. Um, but again, if you go back and look at my GH5 gallery, um, I'll put some links in the video down below. Um, I've got a lot of pictures that I love from the GH5, and unless you're in a situation where you just absolutely need to kind of beat your pictures to death in post-processing, which I normally don't, um, then you'll be totally fine with something like a Micro Four Thirds camera. That's the thing is people say, well, it's a small sensor and, you know, it's not going to do well at high ISO and high dynamic range. But a lot of times you don't really need that. It just depends on what your situation is, what your needs are. But this camera, um, I think, is a great little camera. And um, little is, you know, I don't know if it's super little, it's not really little, little, because like I said, it's pretty much the same size as the Z7, and that's a full frame camera. So hats off to Nikon for making a really nice body like that. It's super comfortable to hold and use. Everything's really well laid out. Um, but same thing for Panasonic. So that's if I buy a small camera, I don't want it so small that I can't really shoot it comfortably. So it's, for me, you know, that was the thing with the X-E3. It just wasn't comfortable to hold. Um, the X100 type of camera, that's a little bit of a different situation because it's super lightweight and um, you kind of know and expect that that's what it is and it's just a fixed focal length camera, 35 millimeter equivalent. And um, that's kind of a fun camera to use. But when you get into inter interchangeable lens cameras and you want to be a little more serious with it and it's just got, um, you know, it's just way too small. Some of the Sony bodies, I think I like that. The A7R 3 wasn't too bad. It was better than I thought it would be, uh, but still not anywhere near as comfortable as the Z7. And uh, by the way, this really nice rubbery grip on here now. The G85, I think, had more of a slippery surface, you know, but this one has got a really nice rubber all the way around from where your thumb, hold, thumb goes on across the card slot door and all the way around to the front. It's kind of deeper grip and you're kind of recessed a little bit there too. And then some um, rubber on the left side. But um, I'll fill up my G95 gallery as much as I can, uh, as quick as I can. Right now, I'm just shooting around, around my property. And uh, I am going on a trip to San Diego for a, a conference for work. And I see the sun shining on the lens, so hopefully it's not got a bad flare or something. Um, of course, there's a little plane going over too. Um, and then also going on a trip to Philadelphia for vacation the week after that. So this week I had to work. Week after that, go out to San Diego for that conference. Should be some photo opportunities there, but it's mostly a work thing. And then after that, I don't know if you hear that too bad, but after that, will be vacation. And um, I don't know how much I'm going to get to use the G95 on vacation. I'll take it with me, but I'm not going to have two cameras hanging off of me and look ridiculous. 
Um, primarily going to be using the Z7 because that's my primary camera and the, the one that I trust to get the you know the image quality that I need and um, you know to get the shot that I want. And as I find opportunities to use this, I will and fill up my gallery gallery as quickly as I can. So looks like I'm uh, still recording, which is good. So uh, thanks for watching, and that's my first look at the G95. I think it's a great little camera. Price again, it's just kind of you know it's up to you if you want to spend twelve hundred dollars for this kit uh, or buy a used G9. If you're looking for a primary camera, then yeah, I wouldn't buy this. I'd buy the G9, um, brand new for almost twelve hundred dollars without a body, without a lens, body only, and then you could buy some used lenses if you're on a budget. Um, or you could even buy a used GH5. GH5 holds your value better, a little more expensive, but G9 for whatever reason. You know, it's an outstanding camera. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty amount, pretty good amount cheaper than the GH5 right now, um, new and used. So, but if you just wanted a second camera, or you're fine with this, and you're fine without the joystick, because that's the only thing I really think that would be missing on this. Uh, everything else, it's got everything you need right, right at your hands. So, um, I'm gonna stop there. What am I at? Thir 13 minutes. That's not too bad. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Goodbye.